this is Adore Delano. Thank you for listening to Rock at Night. Party! Hi everyone, you're listening to Rock at Night. This is Andrea and I have the pleasure of having with me today the wonderful and amazing Adora Delano. How are you doing, Adora? I'm um, well, how are you? Good, good. So tell us, you what have you been up to lately? I know you've um you've done a lot of things in the past and uh, you have a new ex um, a new exciting project that you're working on. Yeah, definitely. I, I never stop writing. So I mean like if we're like have like a day or two off at home, like uh, I definitely get the, the pen and, and paper out and it might, I have like a manic brain so I mean, if I released everything, I'd have like seven albums by now. But no, yeah, I wrote this 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 new little project right here because I wanted to like have something to match my my performance style and kind of have every one of my influences growing up kind of um, bleed into this this kind of gig because I don't see any drag drag girls doing any type of hard or heavier music, so it should be an interesting gig. Now, what is um, the name of the album? The album's called Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love any reason why it's called Whatever. There's like seven different reasons, man. I'm a stoner, so I came <laughs> up with this. Like, I had to really, like, think about this one for a second. But, no, yeah, I really wanted um, the most just blah, blah, like, title of all. Like, I put so much into this, but I wanted I wanted them to know, like, no matter what you feel while listening to this, because I know I'm going to lose a lot of, like, you know, drag music fans and stuff but I, I i presume i'm gonna actually gain some fans as well but I, whatever will be whatever will be <laughs> <laughs> no but you you have a lot of loyal fans and i've you know i've seen your twitter and i've seen your instagram and you have some pretty well you know some pretty good fans and i don't think you're gonna lose yeah. any fans hopefully you'll gain more <laughs> a lot more than what you hopefully have. <laughs> <laughs> now why um why metal? Why did you go from, because mostly you were doing a lot of the um, um, R&B, of course, you were, for people who don't know, you were on American Idol, and then you were also yeah. on um, Drag Race, and then what, Yeah. what was the switch? What made you get into rock and roll? I mean, did you have a specific influence at the time? Well, initially, I started out with rock music. In high school, I was in a punk band called, punk band called Teenage Rampage with my high school oh. girlfriends, and, and we, we sucked ass, but it was, it was my passion. I really loved the heavier music. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it's definitely, it, it fits my performance style. I've been covering a lot of Nirvana and Brody Bill and Distillers and stuff like that, and the kids have been very receptive towards it. But um, my, initially, my second record after Party was supposed to be more of a heavier influence um, with different producers but on drag race the management team that i have were assigned to this like kind of management team to where we all use kind of like the same music producers so okay. um we ended up just kind of using the same producers over and over because it was easier and convenient due to my touring schedule but um initially and essentially it was all supposed to be kind of a heavier sound the, the second time around but but i was never too late to get weird <laughs> Now you're writing. Uh, what what are some of your where do you get your influence uh, writing wise? So do you have a specific uh, point in your life or some current events? Um, anything that inspires yeah. you to do your rock album writing wise? Well, it sounds super hippie, but it's true. Like I like to listen to instrumentation first. I like to listen to the instruments. I like to have somebody play a guitar or a piano or something, and then I come up with melody. Um, all together, I think when it's kind of like a collective um, um, experience with your producer and the bandmates and, and you yourself, it, it becomes more flesh and more kind of like genuine. So 
I mean, I, I like to pull from different parts of my life depending on how the song makes me feel. Like, there's a song on my record called No School, and I pulled from, like, being 15, 16 and figuring out, like, how people are freaking weird. And, and there's also songs about, like, four months ago. So it's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. That's, I, that's I guess personal experience. <laughs> now, I have to tell you, the rock and roll community, they're, they're a tough bunch. Do you think you're going to be... Yeah. Ex- you, are you gonna? Do you think you're gonna be accepted into the rock and roll genre? I think I will, cause I don't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> like the last interview I just did, like, <laughs> like the last interview I did with, with like I think it was with Billboard. They were like, "Oh my god, are you nervous about this?" And I'm like, "No, the album's called Whatever for a reason." Now, like this, I'm not doing this to sell records. I'm doing this to perform and have it match my style and to be fresh and get a band on the road and, and really do what I want to do. Um, but if they like it, I love that. I mean, I've been seeing, like, these cool, like, heavy metal fuckers, like, at my Sydney shows in Australia, these straight guys. It's really neat to see that because it's kind of blending the two genres together. But it should be an interesting ride. If they don't like me, they can kiss my ass. If they do, then I love them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right because a lot of rock and roll music is based on um, – Let's see, uh, androgynous. Uh, you have David Bowie, and then you have even. I was looking at, I was watching your video, uh, Negative Nancy, which I love. I love the sound. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, it reminds me of some. And I'm trying to think. And you kind of have like, a, and sorry if this is going to sound insulting or not, I mean, to compare people, but you have a little bit of a Marilyn Manson touch to your. Style. Really? I love that guy, so thanks. And I get scared when people compare me to, like, idols like that, because I don't want, like, anybody thinking I sound like that shit, because mm-hmm. Marilyn Manson's, like, a fucking god to me, so that's dope. Thank you. You know, and he was amazing. He was this, He was a rocker who had that F-U attitude. You know, I don't care. I'm going to wear makeup. I'm going to wear, you know, like, the dope show. If the if you've seen, if you ever seen the video of the dope show, he's, he's just amazing uh, in that video. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the he, whole era of mechanical animals was my favorite because he 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 was he was blending the whole gender line before it was even exactly. like a revolutionary movement. Like exactly. that was like something that was super taboo and nobody should have touched in a, in a political movement and that that way. But he he definitely took it there. So he was a, he was a huge influence on me as a kid. Right. I mean, and who you know, and he's very well respect. You know, and I think um, when I was watching your video, I was so excited to see that again. I was like, yes. I'm like, hopefully. <laughs> Glory can bring it back because he was such an inspiration and to me i mean i just loved him he just didn't give a crap but uh yeah when still, it, i still follow him on instagram he's so hilarious <laughs> <laughs> now when are you are you planning on touring yeah we start touring um september we kick off the tour in england and then we have an mm-hmm. australian whatever tour um, next year, and then we have like a Europe tour. We're doing Brazil, Argentina, oh, okay. and Peru as well. Okay. Are you going to come visit us in Philadelphia? I'm from Philadelphia, so I would I'd love to okay. go to one of your shows. I love Philly. When I first got my nose job, I went there and did a band <laughs> show, and I hit it on the mic and it started bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you don't want to, uh, we don't want Philly, <laughs> we don't want you to no. have a bad name. <laughs> Sorry Philly did that to you. <laughs> no, it was an awesome show, it was awesome. Where did you play in Philadelphia? It was a small little rock venue, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a dick because I totally forgot the name, but it was a small little rock venue and we had my band come out and we did like uh, an East Coast tour in a little like van and, oh. and Philly was one of the stops. Oh, um, okay. But, yeah. <laughs> If Philly is one well, of those... I don't know that damn venue, man. I forgot. <laughs> Philly is one of those towns where music is very, they're very open-minded to music, which is a, why a lot of bands come here. You know, Philadelphia is very good uh-huh. when it comes to music. We're very supportive. Uh, but uh, I'm curious as to what your touring style is going to be, what you're going to look like on stage. Do you have any idea? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Um, that's... That's like something that goes through my head daily, man. Like, I'm like, uh, well, cause I, I mean, I'm more of a like, I'm not like that visual, but like, um, it's, <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be definitely different and fun. So it's going to be surprising to see the kids reactions because they're so used to me, like 
Well, actually, I'm, I'm bleeding them in. They're, they're kind of getting used to it now. They, they know my style. <laughs> now, your, your influences, is it mostly, you said mostly 90s influence, right? Were you influenced by a lot of the uh, band, sure. the grunge bands in the um, 90s? For sure. Even like, you know, I mean, Audio Slave and stuff. Like, I mean, uh, all the gigs growing up. I, I, was a, I was a 90s baby in 2000s, like growing up in school. So, I mean, uh, like I said, when I mentioned the Mechanical Animals era, like that whole gig was like, that's when I was growing up and seeing like rock music take that kind of like um, stance when, when I was growing up. It was kind of like the weird, the weird discovery moment. And I kind of wanted to put that into a little bit of it, at least like some of the sound into like a couple of the songs at least, because that was a huge important part of my life developing and growing up as a teenager. You see, when I was growing up in the 80s, I grew up with a lot of the glam bands, the bl- the glam metal mm. bands of the, of the 80s. Are you, were you influenced by any of them at all? Oh, for sure. I was just talking on my, my live chat the other day about like how I had the biggest crush on Slash, man. Like my dad had this like <laughs> this, this garage <laughs> this garage like and he like had like all these bands on one wall and like all these like Budweiser girls and I would just sit there and fantasize about marrying like all the guys from like Poison and <laughs> Twisted know. Sister. Like the, the <laughs> I have the Poison <laughs> album. <laughs> I I don't know if you remember their first album, um um the first Poison album was um, "Look What the Cat Dragged In." I think that was the name of the uh, their album. When it's the picture of the four of them, and they're all dressed in, you know, their hierarchies and they're wearing makeup. Yes, and, yes, they're like beat like drag queens. They're literally like um, so yeah, uh, yeah. Amazing. I was I was I think growing up in the eighties, I was a child who grew up with a lot of the drag, you know, the drag crossover because you had. You had Poultry Club, you had the glam bands like Poison, and you have, I mean, you had Dead or Alive, Pete Burns. So it's like the 80s were always yeah. so amazing when it came to that. And, you know, and it's good. That it, was, it, was, it, was, it was using feminism and, like, like, using it in a powerful way and almost, like, bleeding it over into another. There was no, like, limits to that. That's what was so beautiful about the 80s is because it was so experimental and so accepting that it was just, like, hair, makeup, louder, bigger, the more the barrier, you know? Now it's, like, so, like, it's different. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and it's, it's interesting because I almost feel like the 90s kind of killed that. <laughs> so. No, for sure, though. That's the, the irony of it all is that, like, me growing up and, and kind of, like, pulling from influences of that, like, and, and, and I think that that's super important to even bring up Marilyn Manson again, bringing that whole vibe back, because I think it did lose in the 90s, and he did kind of, like, shock everybody and be like, um, hi, like, eh, I have no genitalia, like, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like, the 90s had great music, instrumentally-wise, writing-wise, the music was fantastic, mm-hmm. but I, you know, like, this, I always have this discussion, this in arguments with my friends, and I was like, but the 90s kind of killed what I thought was great about the 80s, which was that glamour, the the, the crossover, you know, like the boys being girl kind of thing. But it's good to see... Oh, for sure. <laughs> but to see you doing this, it's just like, wow, I'm like, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I guess you're right, man. I'm, like, thinking about, like, all, like, um, the bands and stuff. It did go to, like, the greasy, not really caring about how the look went. Like, it totally <laughs> went the opposite, yeah. Now, what um, what has life been like after American Idol for you? Has it changed a lot dramatically? American Idol was interesting. Um, I learned how to, like, act in front of a camera and be professional and be, you know, all that gig. But, I mean... I, I'm, yeah, it was chill, like, it didn't really do much, it put me into, like, a really bad depression after, because, like, I didn't know what to do after, like, yeah. you have to really have a game plan after a show like that, or you, you, you'll you lose it, because uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's yeah. no category for me after that show. <laughs> Did they actually train you how to, how to be on camera, and how to speak, because I, I've heard that, that they, yeah. they, that's a big thing, where they I guess they train you how to be on camera. Yeah, they definitely did. And I'm grateful <laughs> for that because I remember the first time they turned the camera on, I froze and they turned super red and I was like, I don't know how to talk. Like, this is not my gig. I'm from a small town. <laughs> yeah. Now tell us um, 
about your video. It's negative, Nancy. Is that from your first? Is that from your current album? Yeah, the the new record, whatever comes out, the twenty first, and that's just like the promotional single, just to get everybody scared and and like being like, what the hell's going on with her? Um, but yeah, it's the first gig. Uh, I wanted, I picked it because it was like raw and it was weird, it was loud, and I wanted to just shock them because the rest of the album is kind of chiller, but like, eh, it's, it has it has that that hard hardness in it, so I wanted to kind of shock them into it. <laughs> Very good. And um, it seemed the like the video had a. It was it was interesting. It was uh, it had a little bit of a like I said a little bit of that Britain. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Britney Spears also with the the girl and her. I love her. <laughs> and you did didn't you perform with Britney Spears? Oh, she called me on stage. Like she you know she called like the the girls on stage sometimes for freak show. She called me when. Um, Logo had set that up though, like before the crowning of season six, and she had called me upstage or whatever. But I was just excited that for her assistant Felicia knew my name because I knew her since I was like seven. So I was like, oh, oh my god, Felicia knows the name. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us about um, um, give these rockers a little bit of um, a drag race history. How did you get involved with uh, drag race? Drag race. Um, well, I started doing, like I said, I was in, uh, when I was younger, I was super gender bendy, super Pete Burns. I was like a little punk bitch and a little punk band. I was like girly. So like I, I toned it down because my, my mom, because <laughs> I was going to audition for, for it when I was like young, like 16. And she was like, no. <laughs> and then when I was like 17, she's like, cut your hair. They're going to like kill you. Um, but yeah, that's basically how that took off. And then, um, but drag race, I, I started tapping back into, like, my my um, makeup roots and my gigs, and I was doing the YouTube videos and stuff like that and characters, and I loved drag shows, and, um, yeah, I just picked up on it. I started being, like, dude, like, a lot of my friends, like, were, were starting to, like, work in tip spots, and they're starting out in drag, and I was, like, I'm way prettier than, like, 80% of them, <laughs> so I put... <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> so I did it, and I, I got my own show in Orange County, and I just, yeah. Wow. And like, you, you, know, you yeah. made it to the final three, right? Did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, I lost track of the show. I, I started watching it when it first came out. And I think after like the fourth season, I, I stopped. I, I stopped watching because I think they stopped carrying it on the channel. I used to watch it. So that was the end of oh, Dragon for me. <laughs> so that was. Oh, uh, I love season four. Season four is a good season to end on though. Sharon's like one of my favorite yes. of all time. Yes. But now I think I'm going to have to go back and, and do, um, and watch season, um, you were on the sixth season, I think, of Drag Race, and I have to go back yeah. and I have to rewatch that entire episode, <laughs> the entire season. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Now, um, are your friends and family supportive of what you do? Surprisingly, yeah. Oh, like That's good. I come from, like, a really, like, Hispanic, like, like gangster family, and they're super <laughs> accepting. Like, every... <laughs> Like, they don't give a shit. Like, they're just like, whoever fucks with you will beat their ass. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. Um, is there any Lucky. advice you have? You have a lot of loyal fans. And is there any advice you have for any of your fans, especially in this age, you know, with all the politics and all, everything that's going on in the world right now with our current affairs? Is there any advice you would like to give them? Absolutely. I have a couple of things to say. I think that I, I'm going to give a leap around. So you should not take life so serious right now because you can get really, really, really dark, really, really easy. But you should also also take life serious right now because it can do the exact same thing. I say pick up a sign, go fight for what you believe in. Um, don't let anybody tell you that what you're doing and what you feel is, is not valid. I think, um, yeah, like you should just not take yourself so serious. And like we're living in like some freaking crazy ass times right now where we got to just kind of like express who we are and um understand that we are valid and we are important <laughs> very good very good well thank you so much adora for taking time to um speak to rock at night and we thank can you. wait until your your album comes out august 21st yes okay great we cannot wait and where can where can people hear the album where can we buy the album 
gonna be distributed everywhere online, like every every <laughs> like all the stores online, girl. Like Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you want to get it. Google, Apple Music. Right, and it's called whatever. And yes. it comes out. So everyone, make sure to on August twenty first to go and take a listen because uh, I love you. You're you're an amazing singer. Also, you you have such a great talent. And um, thank you again so much for taking the time. Thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and the best of luck. And I hope to see you on, on tour soon. And hopefully Philly will be one of your stops. Well, I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Adora. Thank you, babe. Thank you. You're listening to Rock at Night. Thanks for the intro melody. It's called Get On Down by Billy Bass Alford. Thanks. <laughs>